Hello Wargamers! Uh, earlier this week, Forge World released rules for the new Tau Barracuda AX5-2, so pretty exciting. Uh, you know, I did some videos about this when it was first announced and uh, first shown off, and it's an amazing model. Looks great. Um, certainly a superior sculpt to the original one. Uh, as beloved as that model was, this one is so much better. Um, so very excited for rules to come out for this and spoiler alert they're pretty decent um i think i think it's a good a good uh, deal for us so let's get into it let's take a look at uh what we got there is a link to the rules uh below now keep in mind they are experimental rules they're not official until they're actually published in a imperial armor book but uh, for now this is what we got and uh, they're looking good so check out the rules in the link below and uh, you can follow along with me and, and stuff like that. So, all right, so Barracuda, 175 points. Right off the bat, um, you're getting a pretty good bang for your buck, uh, considering that a hammerhead with long strike is about um, about that same point cost, uh, you're, you're off to a good start. Um, if you have a flyer that can have a nice weapon loadout, which we'll get to in a minute, and is uh, you know not going to get killed quite as easily as a as a hammerhead will. So, uh, like I said, good bang for your buck right off the bat. Uh, the stats: ballistic skill four, front and side armor eleven, rear armor ten, three hull points. So not uh, a very durable flyer based on those uh, statistics, but um, it has some special rules that really help it out. So a pretty pretty durable flyer with those in mind. And then it's Agility 4 and Pursuit 4. Uh, if you're using the new, the new uh, aerial combat rules. And if you are using those rules, it's a strike flyer combat roll. Uh, unit composition is one Barracuda. You can't take these guys in squadrons outside the, the new uh, Death from the Skies rules. And uh, I come standard with a Barracuda heavy burst cannon, two auto targeting long barrel burst cannons, one twin link missile pod, and a Barracuda dispersion shield. So let's we'll go over those bit by bit here in a second. But note that it's a Barracuda heavy burst cannon, not a standard heavy burst cannon. Uh, there's a few times that the uh, word Barracuda in the name actually makes a, a notable difference. So uh, just keep that in mind. All right, so the standard loadout is the Barracuda Heavy Burst Cannon, which um, is range 24 inches, strength 6, AP 4, heavy 6. Um, so relatively short range, but uh, it still has that, that high volume of fire on there, which is nice. Um, two auto-targeting long barrel burst cannons. Long barrel burst cannons still the same as they were, uh, same as they are on a Remora, so 36 inches range, uh, strength 5, AP 5, and heavy 6. Um, that's nice, but really the thing that makes them shine is that this art is this new auto-targeting special rule, uh, which states weapons with the special rule ignore any cover saves or cover save bonuses provided by the supersonic or jink special rules as well as any provided by moving flat out. Um, so right away you're seeing a trend here of it being a, a flyer that is going to be good at taking out other flyers uh, as well as other things that that get cover safe for movement so light vehicles skimmers uh, bikes jet bikes those are gonna um, not be very happy when they see a, a barracuda on the table uh, the twin link missile pod is a, is a normal missile pod and then the barracuda dispersion shield uh, basically is a uh, a shield generator that is better for weak shots and weaker against strong shots. So what I mean by that is, uh, well, exactly what the rule says. Barracuda provides a invulnerable save of six against penetrating hits, increasing to five up against glancing hits. So it's not something that you can rely on keeping your Barracuda safe. Um, because you have to declare if you're going to jink before you know if it's going to be a glancing or penetrating hit. So uh, the the dispersion shield is a safety net and not a not a crutch. So 
It, it can save you if a glancing or penetrating hit gets through, which, um, you know, keep in mind it is only 11 armor, so uh, that's possible. But um, it's not something that should necessarily count on saving you every time, right? But there is good news. It does have another special rule that increases its cover save. Uh, and that is the Agile fire, Flyer special rule. So it increases a special, <laughs> increases its cover save by the Jinx special rule by one to a maximum of three up. So, um, so it can have a three up cover save with the Agile Flyer special rule. Uh, if you put a disruption pod on the flyer, it's not going to make it a two up because it's limited to a three up by the Agile Flyer special rule. So basically, if you if you jinked and claim the uh, the pod, then uh, disruption pod, that's going to get bring you to your three up maximum. Uh, likewise, if you you know, had the, the Agile Flyer special rule on top of that, it's not going to increase it to a two-up. Um, so you can't you can't get a two-up cover save on this, but still a three-up is pretty darn good. Um, right. So that's what I mean by it being a relatively durable flyer right off the bat. Even though it's only 11, uh, 11 armor on the front and sides and 10 and rear, you have a potential for a three-up cover save, which is not bad. And then on top of that, you get a five or a six up invul save, which also is not bad. So um, those two together actually work out pretty well in most situations. Um, of course, you do have to jink in order to get that three of cover save. And so there is a little bit of a mitigating factor on your firepower, but most cases, a living flyer is a lot better than a dead one. So there's that. Um, special rules in addition to that are supersonic, deep strike, and strafing run. So um, again, good at taking out um, other flyers and uh, has a lot of mobility and uh, maneuverability that allow it to take out ground targets as well. So, uh, so far so good. Um, stock, with all these things in mind, uh, it's strongest against light flyers. Um, and some weaker flying monstrous creatures. Um, with the, the burst cannon, with the burst cannon loadout, uh, it's really gonna be, be great at, at taking out those lighter flying monstrous creatures, causing um, grounding checks and uh, hitting rear armor or side armor on, on lighter flyers. So that's the base, right? That's where we're starting, is at a anti-flyer, anti-flying monstrous creature gun platform. Uh, but you have a couple options in order to change its battle role significantly. The first is, of course, with your primary weapon. So you can go from the Barracuda Heavy Burst Cannon to either an Ion Cannon, um, well, Barracuda Ion Cannon, uh, or a Swift Strike Railgun. And both of those are, are viable options, in my opinion. Uh, with the Ion Cannon, it's the same as a standard Ion Cannon, it just can't overcharge. So it's range 60, strength 7, AP 3, heavy 3. Um, and that's going to provide you a leg up on uh, marine units, particularly bikers. If you're going to use this to take out, out bikers, that's going to be great. Uh, other flyers, still going to be a good option. If you're getting that extra strength in there, um, that's going to make it a lot easier to pop those flyers. And it's also going to be um, better for more heavily armored flying monsters creatures. So this is going to be your anti-hive tyrant uh, weapon uh, to some extent at least. And so I think, it, I think it's a strong option there. And that's a free exchange. You don't have to pay any points to switch from your Barracuda Burst Cannon to your Barracuda Ion Cannon. Uh, so it's, it's not, not anything you have to worry about points wise there. Uh, the other option you have is that Swift Strike Railgun. And that is something that we've been searching for in the Tau Codex for a while, is a mobile, uh, relatively durable Strength 10 Railgun platform. Ever since the broadsides lost their Strength 10 Railguns, uh, we've been hurting for that weapon. So 
here we have a, a good option for that. And um, yeah, so it's it's 36 inch range, strength, strength 10, AP1, heavy one, it's a single shot, but um, that's really gonna be good against knights and against uh, other heavily armored units because um, it's gonna be difficult to kill uh, if you if your opponent has points invested in knights, knights are weak against flyers. Um, so being able to have this the strength tank gun in the air is is a, certainly a boon for you, um, and it's also you know still going to be good at at taking out other flyers and stuff. It's just maybe not the most efficient way to do that. So really, you have, you have three options. You can go with the loadout for taking out um, life life flyers, life flying monsters creatures. Um, you know, kind of going for the the quantity over quality of shots options with the heavy burst cannon and the barracuda burst cannon options. Um, the second option is going for something that's a little bit more specialized, but also still has a bit of generality to it with the ion cannon loadout. Like I said, that's going to be better for MEQs and against heavier flyers. I think that's probably the the base loadout that most people are going to want to go with is with the ion cannon and then your third option is with the rail option and that's very specialized but it fills a niche that's missing in the tau lineup the other two loadouts can be replicated other places in your army specifically by riptides by storm surges by ghost kills by crisis suits um, you can put out the type of shots that you're getting with the ion cannon and the burst cannon with other units you cannot get quite the same uh, package in the railgun loadout elsewhere. You can do a hammerhead, but it's a lot more vulnerable. Here you have it flying plus all sorts of other goodies. So I think that's that's really what the Barracuda brings to the table is, is having that um, having that mobile, durable railgun, but it can also be used in more generalist ways as well. Uh, moving on to your secondary weapon options, you can basically switch out your uh, auto-targeting burst cannons for auto-targeting cyclic ion blasters, the same kind that you can get on your crisis suits. Um, again, if you are moving away from burst cannons, if you're going to go with the railgun or the ion cannon, the upgrade for five points for the cyclic ion blasters is the way to go. Um, going to be better against flyers, going to be better against MEQ, pretty much most things is going to be better against just because of the higher strength uh, on it. Granted it's half the shots, but higher strength uh, can make a big difference and lower AP is big too. Um, right, uh, you can take up to four seeker missiles on it. Uh, I mean, the only way reason that I would invest in seeker missiles on this guy is if you know, again, you're loading it out to take out other flyers. Uh, with the new draft FAQ, if you fire a seeker missile from a model with Skyfire, it has Skyfire, right? So if you have seeker missiles on your Barracuda, those seeker missiles have Skyfire. And so that can that can help you out with, with flyers as well. Um, as far as vehicle war gear that you could take uh, vehicle support systems that you could take out of the Tau Codex. Um, you know, you could take a disruption pod, like I said, but it's pretty redundant with the uh, dispersion shield already. Um, excuse me, not the dispersion shield, the Agile Flyer special role. Um, you're not going to be able to get it to a two up save, but you can have a six up in the open without jinking. So, I mean, probably not really worth it. Um, at that point, you are getting more and more points intensive at that point, and really having a six up cover save, not not that much uh, is gonna happen there. You're probably just gonna end up jinking if you think you need it. So I probably wouldn't invest in that. Um, you could also go with uh, um, flechette dischargers to uh, give you a cover save against against weapons with interceptor. I've never been a big fan of that. I know, I mean, it, it can come in handy, but you have all your other durability backups to help you out. So I wouldn't, I probably wouldn't put much more, more points into durability for this unit. I think it's probably pretty good as is. Um, other than that, not a lot to say. Um, 
like I said, I think I think your the novelty in the Barracuda is with the railgun, but it still has a really good um, a really good backbone in the high on loadout. And even with the burst cannon loadout, if, if you want to do that, um, I'm certainly going to be getting one of these. I have a guy going down to Gen Con. He's going to order one for me. And uh, so I look forward to sharing the model with you once I get it and uh, building it, painting it, stuff like that. Uh, a note on the model, actually, now that I think about it, it comes with uh, nice little sockets for magnetization already. And this is something that Forge World's been doing more often now. And... I think it's really going to make for a better experience for the hobbyist and for the player, right? So, pretty excited about that. Um, yes. Oh, I should also mention that's a heavy support choice. So, it's not going to conflict with your Yvara, but it will conflict with your hammerheads if for some reason you were really taking hammerheads. Um, this is just going to be your flying hammerhead now. So, yeah, I think uh, overall really great package great points value um really really worth it uh when you get down to it i think it's i think it's a great addition to the towel line so let me know what you guys think in the comments below and of course happy wargaming